And next, we have the number monster that kind of took the market by storm. Um, the Super Dimensional Robo Galaxy whatevers and uh, uh, Super Magnus Max or whatevers. Those, both of those are kind of gone up in price because of this one card right here. This very, very generic rank four, that is a number, which we still haven't gotten all the numbers yet. I don't know why. I don't know why. We still haven't gotten all the numbers yet. There are numbers in the ArcV and Vrains mangas when all the numbers should have been in Yuma's hands when Astral went back to his own world. But, you know, guess not. Anyway, so um, at the end of the battle phase, if this card destroyed an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon from your extra deck one rank 10 or higher machine exceed monster by using this face-up card you control as material. So, if he destroys a monster by battle, he becomes a rank 10. You just put a rank 10 on top of him. Rank 10 or higher. So any rank 10, 11, 12, there aren't any rank 13s in the actual game. I know there's a few in the anime. Or in the OCG, I think. There's like a rank 13. But it, or uh, I, I don't know if it actually got printed. But yeah, rank 10, 11, or 12. So any any high ranking monster, he can bring. Or, oh, machine exceed monster. Machine exceed monster. My, my, my fault. My fault. It has to be a machine exceed monster. But most of the rank 10s are like machine based anyway because trains, you know. And uh, yeah, this tree has a exceed summon, and then you transfer its materials to some monster, and then you only use this effect uh, once per turn. And then just face up card in the field will be destroyed by battle by card effect. You detach one material from this card instead. So just in case you know your opponent tries to get rid of this uh, beforehand, they 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 see that you know you're trying to set up a rank ten, and then they try to destroy it. You just be like, nope, not happening. Uh, it's a it's a nice card. I, I like this generic. And so it kind of just gives it, you know, a lot of access. Um, so we're definitely going to see more of this card as it comes out. But um, for the most part, I don't think it's anything game-breaking by itself. But I feel like if you use this in the right deck, it just might be pretty broken. And then uh, I know there's another number here. So number 67, uh, Paradise Masher. Uh, we got all the dice support in this set. So two or more level 5 monsters once returned to your main phase 1. You can detach two, material, two materials from this card. Each player rolls a six-sided die twice, and the player with the total, uh, with the higher total roll, cannot activate monster effects, nor declare attacks until the end of the next turn. Once per turn, while this card has material, if each player rolls a dice or a dice, you can treat one of those die results as seven. And so, um, oh, okay, okay. So pretty much what what he does here is that you want your opponent to get the higher roll. And so when he has material, that means you pretty much have to use three of him, like three, three, three level five monsters to summon him if you want to put your opponent in this situation. Um, you can uh, make it so that uh, when he um, roll, rolls a dice, or that when your opponent rolls a dice, one of the two dice rolls counts as, counts as seven so that um, pretty much they have a higher chance of getting like a higher number. So let's say they got like a, a four and a one. You can make that one into a seven and then their number becomes 11, you know? So it would, have, it would have to be real unlucky for you to get a 12. But um, other than that, you know, I, I, I think it's just an okay card, you know? Like I don't think it's gonna be anything game breaking. It requires too much maintenance to really make it, too many resources and not enough payoff. Um, if it said your opponent can't summon or something like that, then this card would be on a whole nother level. But it's it's only attacking and activating effects. You know, you could you could still kaiju this guy. <laughs> so, um, it, it's it, it's just okay. It's a number monster. So you know, it's n another add to add the, to the collection. You know, I guess. Now this one, number seventy five, Gossip Shadow of Confusion. This is actually one that I think is real solid. So it's two or more level three monsters. Spellcaster exceed rank three, right? So once per turn, when your opponent monster activates its effect, you can detach two, mater two materials uh, from this card, and then you can change the effect to each player draws one card. And you're like, Nistro, that's that's not all that good. And I'm just like, well, that's that's okay, but that's not what, what we're here for. So you can target one other number exceed monster you control, attach this card to it as material, and then transfer this card's materials to it, and then you go and use this effect once per turn. So if you make him 
with uh, let's say you make him with three level threes, right? So he has three level threes on him. Um, and you don't, you know, like it's during your turn. And then you make a number 86. A number 86, right? Just using two monsters. Just using two monsters. The bare minimum for a number 86. You attach this guy to that number 86. Guess what? That number 86 has six materials. Six materials. And that means for three turns, for three turns, your opponent cannot normal summon or special summon. For four turns, this guy's going to be unaffected by card effects. And for two turns, he's going to be able to blow up his, his opponent's side of the board. So this card mixed with number 86 is actually really, really broken. And the fact that it's a generic uh, rank three makes it even better. I mean, you, you don't even need to use three, three monsters. Even if you use two monsters and then two on number 86, that just makes it so much easier because... Um, you know, two on him, like two, two under him, and then you know, just make a 86 with two level four warriors, and then you just attach this onto your 86. So, um, in Goki's in, in Goki Nightmare, watch out for this combo because this is definitely going to be something that's going to happen a lot because Goki's do play level threes so that they can make um, in, in, invoker. So, if they ever have the option to make an 86. Instead of going into Invoker, they're going to make Gossip Shadow, and they're going to put these materials onto the 86. So just uh, be be wary of that. I think I think this is one of the best cards in the set. This, this might be a money card. So uh, pick these up early if you can. And uh, our last number, I think. Number 90? Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, the last number. Uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. Cannot be destroyed by battle by card effects while it has a Photon Exceed material. I mean, I'm surprised they're even still making Galaxy and Photon Exceed monsters. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's where's the summoning condition? <laughs> Where where's the summoning condition? Is it just two uh two two level eights? Uh oh, okay, two two level eights, two level eights. Okay, uh, think um. I don't even want to say his name. I, I don't speak Spanish, so I know I'm going to uh, slaughter that name if I attempt to say it. So, two level 8 monsters cannot be shown by card effects while it has a photonic seed material. You can only use the following effects of number 90 once per turn. When an opponent's monster activates its quick effect, you can detach one material from this card and get the activation. And if the detached material was a galaxy card, destroy that card. So, I mean, I don't even think you need galaxy monsters on it. But, um,. I guess it works like you get a little extra benefit if it's a galaxy card. I mean, destroying, like negating a, a, a monster effect even without destroying it is still pretty powerful. So um, I guess that's that's one thing that can happen. Uh, and then during your opponent's turn, um, you can activate this effect, choose one photon or galaxy card from your deck, and if you do, either add it to your hand or attach it to this card as an exceed material. Okay. So he's somebody that's more going to sit in defense mode. And he's just going to, you know, put materials onto himself during your opponent's turn. And then um, it says you can use each effect once per turn. So it's not you have to choose one. You can use both effects per turn. So, um, you know, during your opponent's turn, you get to attach materials to them. And then during both turns, you get to negate effects and destroy monsters. So that's cool. And then he also gets to search, you know, like it doesn't have you don't have to attach it to him. Like you get to search and it says Photon or Galaxy card. It doesn't say monster, it says galaxy card in your deck and then attach it to it. So that definitely works out real well. A real, real solid monster. If you're playing galaxies or photons still in 2018, you know what? You can make it work. We are getting that light link monster real soon in Cybernetic Horizon. So you know what? You can you can definitely make it happen. Make the dream work, man. Next, we have a uh, Iron Draw. If you control exactly two machine effect monsters and no other monsters, you can draw two cards. Also, for the rest of the turn, after this card resolves, you can only special summon monsters once. You can only get one Iron Draw per turn. I honestly don't know what deck to, to play this in. Um, you could say Cyber Dragons, because you know two machine effect monsters would be real easy for them to do, and then just get one that one last special summon. Um, but I think for for the cost, I think drawing two cards and then uh, the fact that you still get to special summon is no big cost. Like you can special summon as many times as you want before activating this card, as long as you end up with uh, two uh, machine monsters on your field. I, I guess it's um, it, it, like it's not the worst card ever. I, I feel like some people are going to make this card work 
Like they're gonna make this card work somehow, and so uh, we'll definitely see that. Um, maybe even Ancient Gears. I, I like. I forgot about Ancient Gears completely as a deck. Like I just saw the little gear on the top of the card. But um, yeah. Um, moving on. Uh, glorious numbers. If you control no monsters, target one number exceed monster in your graveyard. Spell summon it. Then draw one card. You can banish this card from your graveyard and then uh, target one number exceed monster you control. Attach one card from your hand to it as exceed material. So, um, pretty much just revives number of monsters from the grave and it lets you draw a card. So it's kind of like a one for one. Like you don't really go minus activating this card. You go the opposite of minus actually. And so you can banish this card and then attach materials from your for, to uh, to a number monster from your hand, and you could do that um, the same turn that you special that number monster from your graveyard. So it's kind of just looking out for that number monster, that card you drew. You know, like it is like this is a really like self-sufficient card. Like as long as you have a number monster in your graveyard, this is a card that really does everything for itself. You don't really need outside cards to interact with it. So we might see this card played in a few like exceed based decks. Um, time will tell, but. Definitely not the worst card ever. It's nice we're still getting number support. And uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm just gonna end it here for for this for this episode of uh, Battles of Legends R Relentless Revenge. New cards from Battles of Legends Relentless Revenge. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, see you guys in the next one where we're gonna be covering the last two archetypes in the set, if you even can call them archetypes. I, I like they aren't archetypes, but they're deck themes that are kind of like archetypes. So yeah. Catch you later. Peace.